Made some pretty good progress last night. Got new shocks and struts installed. Now I bought these used from a friend and they have all of about five miles on them. Now the interesting thing here is this strut is correct. You can see it ends in 069 for the part number. That is a front driver side strut. And then I have this one over here, which you can also see ends in 069, which is a front driver side strut. The mount on it is on the wrong side. The spring perch is reversed. So somehow I had these installed on his E36. As you can see, they do bolt in, but it's definitely wrong. So I have to get another passenger side strut. I have the diff in and torqued down with marks so you can see it's been torqued. The bolts on the axles are in but not torqued down. I moved the engine and I'm currently going through it. So the oil filter housing gasket is done. I ran into some trouble with the alternator where the terminal here got stuck and wound the wire up around it so I had to cut it off and I'm about to re-terminate that. The water pump's done. You can see how much coolant leaked out of the engine. It was kind of a disaster, which I'd caught it on video. I also replaced this line. It's not torqued down yet. I just grabbed torque specs. So the Vanus oil line will be done as well. We're gonna clean up the head, blow it out, make sure everything's clean. So after all this is back together, uh, we can start to try and get it back in the car. After working on the engine yesterday, I tried to degrease at least the front of it. It's uh, pretty much all put back together except the power steering pump. I bought an aluminum water pump pulley that does not fit. So I will detail that later. To recap real quick, what I did is I rebuilt all the fuel injectors. And by that, I mean I replaced their integrated filters, the O-rings, and the little pintle caps. You can see the fuel rail on this is now different. This is an M50 TU rail. So it's got the lines that go underneath the intake and I did get them routed so they'll work. And then I replaced literally all the hoses on this. So all the coolant lines, all the fuel lines, all the vacuum lines are brand new. I was able to, and this is why I rolled it out of the way, paint inside the rail here. So you can see that nice shiny new paint is the stuff I ordered. Now whether this actually matches or not is a great question because I did clean this, I didn't do an amazing job. It's like there was a black overspray. Like that's not really dirt, doesn't come off. And this is much brighter. On the other side, I just kind of patched this and I'd say it's pretty close. The biggest thing is this is now clear coat, whereas I'm not actually sure the inside of this car actually has clear on it. The biggest thing is it's not like a complete eyesore and it won't rust. The engine is in the car. Obviously the subframe still needs to go in, so that's what I'll be doing next. It's down here. This rubber pad has to be removed. That was for the four cylinder. And the uh, power steering lines are different between the inline six and the four cylinder model, so I have all new lines. We're gonna clean this up, get it all nice and pretty. We can put it back in. The other issue I ran into, you can see here, this is where the old automatic transmission cross member used to mount. And when I was trying to put the engine back in, I was trying to bolt it up here, which doesn't work. Instead, it now has to go forward. And that's where it's supposed to be. You can see the shifter drop right in, no problems there. And if we're gonna swap these motor mounts out, the other side fell off. So it's quite shot. I've been going to town with some brake clean. So you can see everything under here. It's not perfectly clean, of course, but it's a whole lot better. Here's the steering rack down there. In fact, you can see it's getting blown out. So the lines are brand new because these are 328 lines and they tend to leak anyway. So I replaced those, but the rack is the old rack out of the 318 convertible and it was completely dirty before. The engine is officially in. This isn't holding anything. Subframe's in from the bottom. 
Steering is connected. We swapped the strut out, so it's the correct strut now. At this point, it's just a matter of putting everything back together and seeing if it runs. The drive shaft is in. It's not tightened down, but it is in. Got the new Guibo in, so that's all good. Again, not tightened down, but it is in. Looking at the clutch line here, I didn't order the piece that goes on the end of it, which is kind of a problem. So I'm gonna be looking at that right now. I might have to come out to dinner car. The struts are on. These bolts are torqued down. The pinch bolt, I wanna check the direction on it and then torque that down. The subframe bolts still need to be torqued down, possibly replaced because they are supposed to be new and the one doesn't look great. Motor mounts are just sitting there for right now. The F cap bolts are also uh, torqued down. The goal for today is to get this car to fire up or the engine to fire up. And the first thing of course is to get oil in it. So I'll be doing that momentarily. We're gonna be running Liquid Molly 5W40. I was also going through this, this wiring harness is not in great shape. I didn't realize this before, but if you can see here, hopefully this will focus. This ground wire is like melted and there's other damage in here. So I was trying to trace back this blue wire that we didn't know what it went to. And if I'm correct, although the continuity isn't there, it comes to red and white, which I believe is switched power coming off of these relays, but there's no continuity, so I don't know what's up with that. We have a cut wire here. I haven't been able to figure out exactly what that wire does yet. This, you can see, is broken. However, this uh, part of the harness is all, it's like the data link connector and uh, EVAP related. So nothing that will keep the car from running. Okay, most of it is wired up. Make sure nothing is a problem. We've got these three connectors on, so that's XC20, X69, I think, and X6031, if I recall correctly. These harness, um, these relays come over with the engine harness. We've got the engine ECU on. I've got the ground point here. Down there, I actually broke the ground strap mount point off the motor mount, so I have to replace the motor mount now but I rigged it up to the AC compressor. So we should have a solid engine ground at the moment. So all that's really left, I have the coils unplugged and then two positive cables. We're gonna make sure the car is out of gear. This is always hot, unless you disconnect the battery in the trunk, which I don't think I did. So we're gonna try and be very careful as we work on this. Okay. So far, I need that full. Okay, sparkage, but no fires. So that's good. And now, just be really careful when we put this on. That also means the battery has some amount of charge. Okay. And at this point, make sure there's nothing that's gonna get caught in the engine. Don't see anything, so I think we're good there. If I turn the key, in theory, we should get a fuel pump and stuff like that. Okay, fuel pump's on. Turns out we do have a fuel leak. I'll show you, it's right here. You can see it dripping off. The funny thing is this hose clamp, I don't even think I touched. So <laughs> I'm going to replace the fuel filter, but I wanted to get everything fired up with old fuel and stuff before I replaced it with a brand new filter. And I have a brand new fuel pump on the way as well. So it looks like we got to fix the fuel leak right here. The new lines that everything I did are actually up there and they're dry. Okay, fuel leak should be fixed and I let all the, cleaned up all the fuel. So at this point we should be good to go again. I pressurized the fuel system, it all looks fine. And from what I understand, this connector right here is for the park and neutral safety switch for the automatic pins. Five and seven need to be bridged from what I can tell. 
it would look like it's going to be five here and seven right there. I know I was looking for a brown and black striped wire. So that looks correct. We're going to try and do that. Bridged. Sorry, I needed two hands for that. And can't roll anywhere. It does indeed crank. So let's crank it and get some oil. All right, that should do it. And at least hopefully get some oil pressure in there. So let's go ahead, get these coils hooked up. Got our harness here. Don't know if you can see that or not. We got our coil connector hooked up as well. So we should be good to go. At this point, it should have everything it needs to run. Check underneath the car, make sure there's no gas. There is not. We have two fire extinguishers, three actually right here in the immediate vicinity. So at this point, I don't have throttle, but I do have everything else hooked up and the ICV is there and working. So let's try it. Yeah. It runs. Very, very loud. All right. So it runs. It's almost nine o'clock. So it's my one fire up for this evening. But runs, doesn't make any noise. Other than exhaust, sounds like it's on all six. We'll call that a success.